Hi everybody. Today I am going to teach you how to make a tiny mouse. And a little amigurumi in my style. They're also little rats, depending on what you want to call them. Little, little rodent. They work up pretty fast. They take me about 15 to 20 minutes each, depending on the, the day I'm having. And hopefully they will work up pretty fast for you too. And we're going to see if we can break it down as easily as I possibly can. So, to make it, you're going to want a 3.75 if I can get it to focus, 3.75 crochet hook, a set of scissors, any kind of scissors as long as they'll cut your yarn, a tapestry needle of some sort so that it just has the nice big eye to make it easier to sew in your ends, some 8 millimeter safety eyes and the washers that we have in here, just a little bit of polyester stuffing, this is actually going to be more than I need, and finally your yarn. Any brand of gray and white yarn, you're going to want it to be 5 mil. And then all of that, we're going to just get going. To start, you're going to want to have a magic circle. So, to do a magic circle, you're going to take two fingers, you're going to grab the yarn, hold on to it with your thumb on your middle finger, and loop it around both fingers, and then turn your fingers over so you can see the back, and lay it down here. And I'm going to use this hand, this finger, to hold it in place there. I'm going to take my hook. I'm going to put it between my fingers, under that first yarn, and over the second yarn. And I'm going to pull it through and turn the yarn over so it's making a little loop there. And then I'm going to grab the yarn from out of this finger and pull it through there. And then hold it tight. At that point we have the start of our magic circle and we can kind of do whatever we want with it. I'm going to grab the yarn right at this whole intersection of everything that's going on there with these two fingers and my hook and I'm going to slide it off of these fingers, like so. And now the yarn, as you can see, it's kind of looping over a couple times here, this tail. I like to take it and slide it out the front. It just makes it a little bit easier to get the magic circle sliding action that we'll do later. As you can see, it slides to make that circle bigger and smaller. And now, I'm going to make it bigger so that I can work in it more easily. I'm going to hold on to the yarn with this hand, and then this hand and I'm going to tension with this finger. I like to tension personally, everybody has their own style, but I like to tension by folding this finger over like that and then hold, pinch this yarn with my other hand so that I have all of the tension that I need. Now we're going to put five single crochets into this magic circle. So we're going to go into the circle, yarn over or under, I've never been good at understanding that, but we're going to grab the yarn, pull it through, and then we're going to grab the yarn and pull it through both those loops at the same time. And that's one single crochet. And we're going to do that again. Grab it, and then grab and pull it through. Two. Three more times. All right. So now we have our five single crochets. You can double check that you have the five by looking at the loops on the back. So we have one, two, three, four, five. And we're going to take this tail here, and we're going to pull it tight to close up that circle. As tight as we can. Because we don't want any degree of a hole there. And later, this will be the start of the nose. So that is going to turn into that. Now to end this round, we're going to go into this first stitch that we made over here. We're going to do a slip stitch. So we're going to slide our hook through both of those humps on the outside, grab the yarn, and pull it through, and then also pull it through that hook that we already had to make a full circle. And that is our round one. So now we're going to chain one. So we're going to grab the yarn that we're working with and pull it through that loop, chain one. And we're going to put one single crochet in each of the stitches around. So through both of these hops, the loops, grab the yarn, pull it through both, and then grab the yarn and pull it through both, single crochet. One in the second stitch, and then same thing for the other three stitches. Alright, and now like we did before, we're going to do a slip stitch to close the circle. We're going to want to make sure we're not accidentally introducing another stitch, so we don't want to go into here, because that's that's what our slip stitch was from the last round. We're going to get, skip over it and go into here. So we're going to go through, we're going to take our hook, and we're going to go through those loops, grab the yarn, pull it through, and then pull it through our starting. And you'll kind of want to ease the yarn so that all of it is going the direction you want. We're going to be working the circle away from us. So make sure the tail is going out the side, make sure everything else is going out the side, and you have the start of the little nose. So now chain one, 
And we're going to do two single crochets in each this round. So we're going to go to the first stitch, one single crochet, two single crochet. And this will make this start to increase. Same thing the next one, and each one of the following. And we're ending with a round size of 10. All right, so now we've slip stitched through, closed out our round, and we have a round of 10 there. We're gonna chain one, and now we're gonna do one single crochet in each of the stitches around this round. All right, I have just slip stitched and done my chain one for to start the next round. On this next round, we're gonna start introducing the little feet. So to show you, Later down the line, when we're done, we're going to have little feet, four little feet for our mice sticking out. So we're going to put that back down. So for this one, we're going to make it bigger, increase the size of this round up to 15 and put those feet in. To do that, we're going to do a single crochet in this first stitch, two single crochet in the next, one single crochet, and then two single crochet. So that was a pattern for the first three stitches. The first one had one single crochet, the next had two, the third had th one, and then the fourth had another two. So it was one, two, one, two. And now we're gonna take from where we are and we're gonna chain twice. So grab the yarn, pull it through there, and then pull it through a second time. So that's chain two. And now, where if you look at the stitch that came right off the bit, one stitch back, it has these two humps here. And then if you look at the back side, there's another hump right there. We're gonna wanna go through this back hump. So we're gonna go and do a single crochet into this back hump. So slide your yarn through and it'll just have one bit of yarn over it. Grab the yarn, pull it through, and then finish out that single crochet. And now we're gonna go into this loop that we came out of on the main body, and we're gonna slip stitch into that same bit and hold it in place. So that starting stitch that we came out of will now have the two single crochets and then the foot with the chain two slip a uh, single crochet and then slip stitch back into that same loop. So now we'll go into the next stitch with one single crochet and the next with two single crochets. One, two, and we're gonna make the foot again. So chain two, one, two, and then single crochet to that back hump, like so, and then slip stitch to the starting uh, stitch that we had come from, like so, and that is our first two little feet. Now we're gonna finish out the rest of this round in the pattern of one single crochet, two single crochet. We're gonna do another two sets of that. So one, and then two, one, two, and one, and one, and one, two. And then we're gonna slip stitch. Remember to skip over our previous slip stitch. So we're gonna go into the first stitch there, slip stitch one, and our round size is now 15. We're gonna chain one, and we're gonna put a single crochet in each of the stitches around. As we come up on the feet, it's gonna be really easy to accidentally put in extra stitches that we don't want. So make sure when you're putting them in that you put a stitch in this first bit here. So where the where you put the two double crochet or the two single crochets in, we're gonna go into that hole right there with one single crochet. And then guiding our working yarn to the other side, we're gonna take our hook and we're not gonna go into this hole. I always personally feel like I wanna go into this hole, but that's not a hole that we wanna crochet into. That is where we slip stitched back to our, our foot back onto the body. So it's not actually part of our round. We're gonna skip over it and we're gonna go into this hole here. And we're gonna single crochet right there. And make sure you push the foot out so that it's on the outside of the body and finish out our single crochet. And then another two between the legs. Because remember, we put three single crochets in that space before. And now, again, we're gonna not go into here. This is not the hole we wanna go into. That's where we slip stitch back. We're gonna go into this one because that's actually a single crochet that's part of our round. Get that foot to the other side of the yarn. Finish out that single crochet. We got another one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, so we come to the top and we're gonna get a single crochet up here. Uh, slip stitch up here to end it and chain one. And now if you wanna check, you can go through and you can count all the stitches to make sure you still only have the 15 that we wanna be working with. Because otherwise you're gonna get a little bit of funky shaped mouse. It'll just get a little bit more rotund around the center, might get a little bit longer than you want it to be. We wanna keep it at that 15. So we're gonna do another 
uh, two rounds at that 15. So between the legs, there will be 15. Uh, three sets, three rows of 15. Now that you've completed your two rounds of 15, so that you have a total of three after the feet, we're going to put in another row with feet. So this is also going to be a row that we are going to start decreasing. To do that, we're going to, uh, you can either skip a stitch every time I say to decrease, like so, and do a single crochet into the next stitch along, or what I prefer doing is to loop through two stitches in a row, like that, to do a little decrease and then pull through all three the same way you would with a single crochet, but instead of pulling through two loops, you're pulling through three. I just feel like it looks cleaner for me, but either option will get you the same effect, essentially. So now that we've looped through twice and we're going to be in line, you should make sure you are in line with where the first foot was before. We're going to do the same thing of chain two, single crochet to that back hump, and then slip stitch to the body like so. And now we're going to do one single crochet in the next stitch. And you might notice that's just the inverse of what we did down here at the nose to create the, the increases. Uh, that is a pattern of two decrease and then one standard. So we're going to do the same thing again. Two stitches together, two decrease, chain two, single crochet to that back hump, and then slip stitch to the body. Single crochet in the next stitch. And now you have all the legs that you're gonna have. And we're gonna finish out this pattern of single crochet, decrease stitch. Single crochet, decrease. And then once you get back to the beginning again, you're going to slip stitch to close out that round, single crochet, and we have the beginnings of the decrease of the body. At this point, we're going to put the eyes in so that we can access them more easily. To do this, you can either put in a stitch marker in this to keep it in place, keep your hook in. I like to pull just a little bit of yarn through. That way I can pull it out, set it down, and manipulate the body without worrying about losing my stitches. So we're going to take our two eyes. You can kind of put them wherever you feel is looks the cutest for you. I'm going to put my eyes right one here, and I'm going to put the other one right here. And you just slide them in between the holes. And then you can turn it over, make sure you like the effect where they're sitting. I think I like that. So now I'm going to take, I'm going to put my thumbs on those two eyes and my fingers on the back so that I can push on them to turn it inside out. And now I can access the back to make sure I can secure them. I'm going to use the washers to secure them. If your washers aren't securing them as well as you would like, you can also use a little bit of glue on the back of them. You can, some people have melted the washer a little bit or the safety eye a little bit to keep it in place. Um, I usually, I've never had a problem with just using these washers for at least these little mice. Sometimes for bigger projects, I will use just a little bit of glue. Um, you can put them on either flat like this, or sometimes my yarn is a little bit uncooperative, and so I've been putting them on the other way so that they're kind of arched out like that. And you just slide them on until they are clicked as firmly in as you feel like is appropriate for what you're doing. And then you can pull on them, make sure it feels as secure as you want them to be, and I like how it is. So we're gonna do that for both. And push it back out. And you can test them again on this side. Just try to get your fingers under there, and yeah, I like how it is. So I'm also going to take a little bit of my stuffing. This is just your standard polyfill stuffing. And I'm going to stuff in just a little bit so that I can still work around the base of the body. But just to give it a little bit of a structure, a little bit more, something more for me to hold on to. And I will be stuffing more later. This is just to give it a little bit something for now. So put your needle back in, pull your thread back through to where you want it, and now tension again, and you're working. We're going to do one final round of decreased stitches, and it's going to be decreasing all the way around. So, 
Same as we did when we made these legs, we want to make sure we're not putting extra stitches in. So we already have started with our first one here, which means we're going to skip straight to these two in the middle. And there is only two in the middle for that final row. So grab that leg, pull it out, loop through again for the next stitch, and then pull through all three. And then same thing over here, we're going to go through that first, loop through the second, pull through all three. And then we're going to do that another three times. Before doing our final slip stitch to close out the circle, I'm going to continue to put a little bit of stuffing in to get it up to my desired level of squishiness, because right now he's just a little bit flatter than I'd want him to be. And it is sometimes going to be a little bit easier if you just hold the stuffing in front of the hole and you use a stuffing stick. It's really not necessary. You can use your fingers, you can use a needle, kind of whatever you've got. But I'm going to use a stuffing stick for now to stuff the stuffing in as much as I want. Use a little, just a little bit more. test. And yeah, I think I like that. There is going to be just a little bit more yarn put in, so I don't want to overstuff him. I want to make sure he's just ever so slightly less squishy than I'm going to want him to be, because when we attach the ears and the tail, some of that yarn is going to wind up going inside and making it just a little bit bulkier. So now that we have where we want it, we're going to do our final slip stitch. And now we're going to make sure we have just enough thread that we can tie that hole close. So for me, that is just about Eh, between four and six inches. It's not an exact science. It's however much you feel like you need to work with. So I'm going to cut that. And then where that slip stitch we've pulled through, I'm going to pull all the rest of the way through and give it a good tug. And now it's going to lay flat across the body. And we're just going to run that needle around each of these stitches to pull it tight. One of my tips with threading needles, and this applies to both yarn thread as well as sewing thread, is if you take your yarn and you fold it in half so you're not worrying about this tail, that gives you a much cleaner surface to work with. And if you put it right so that it's barely poking out between two fingers, you can take your needle and just slide it down between that little gap and it'll come out and then you can pull it. I find that's a lot faster than any sort of licking or using tools, but whatever gets it through the needle so that you can sew it, sew it tight. And just thread through each of the stitches around the hole pull it tight so that you have that sealed off hole. And then I like to, just for a little bit of final security, loop my needle through the opposite end of where I currently am and then tie it just through that little loop and pull it tight again. And then we're going to lose all of this loose thread inside the body. So I'm just going to slide the needle in, pull out the other end, and then use my needle to stuff the remainder of this yarn through. You can also just cut it and have some scrap yarn, but I like to use it just as a little bit of extra stuffing on the inside. Like so. And then to make it look cute again, you just gotta give it a couple squeezes in little spots, stretch it out, and that is the body of the mouse. Now we're going to work with our white yarn to make the tail and the two ears. So we're going to start with the ears. The same way we did with the, the body, we're going to start with a magic circle. So take a yarn, loop it over to the far side, grab your yarn, under, pull through. Pull that tail to the front, and we're ready to work. So we're going to put five single crochets in this. So one, five. And now we're going to pull that nice and tight. And we're not going to close the circle with a single crochet like we did for the body. Instead, we're going to leave it just a little bit open in this sort of moon shape. So keeping our hook in to keep that thread from unraveling, we're going to grab our scissors and we're going to cut just a short length of it, just enough that we can tie it onto the body later. So that for me is about an inch, two inches. And using our hook, we're gonna pull it the rest of the way through and that will give you one ear and we'll work with that later. So it should look like this. 
do that exact same thing to make the second ear. We've now got two ears. I'm gonna sew them on after I've also made my tail. To make the tail, we're gonna start with a chain. To make a chain, we're gonna start with a slip knot. So you're gonna take the yarn. I just like to wrap it around one finger and cross it over and then pull it off that finger and then take the yarn from the long end that goes back to the skein, push it through and then pull that knot tight around it like so. And that'll give us, it's just a very standard slip knot that we can work with. Stick your hook in, pull on the longer end and that'll pull it tight around your hook. So now I have my tensioning hand and I can pinch this working thread to keep all my tension just right. And we're gonna make a chain that is five. So one, two, three, four, five. So chain five. And now, just like we did when we were making the feet, we're going to go opposite the two loops that are together and we're gonna go into the back cups here. And we're gonna do a slip stitch to each of those. So not a single crochet, a slip stitch. So go to that first back hump, grab the yarn and pull it through both. You might have to kind of negotiate the yarn a little bit, just be patient with it and make it go through with a slip stitch. And there's only gonna be four slip stitches because to get that turn, we're gonna lose one of the back humps. So if that was our first slip stitch, do another three down the remaining humps. So that is our tail with our chain five, four slip stitches down. And then same with the tail, keep that crochet hook in so that we can grab our yarn cut it and slide it all the way out at the end. Okay, now all we have to do is tie these pieces onto the main body. So take your needle, I'm going to start with my tail here, and you're going to start, remember, it's a lot easier instead of trying to get the yarn to go through like this with a bunch of like poking and prodding and just, it's kind of a nightmare. So you take it, you fold it in half, pinch it right at the edge of your fingers, and then slide the hook over it like so. It'll slide through really easily without fail every single time. Grab your body and then right at the back you're going to want to follow the line of the back of the body down until you get to the base of like right at the top and just kind of sew it on where you feel it's appropriate to. I'm going to choose right here and just slide it through that hole and out like that and then going to go back through the other side of the body right next to where this starting thread had come from and through that hole, pull it through. And I'm gonna pull this needle off really quick so that I can then just tie these together in a square knot. So we're gonna take our right side and our left side, loop the right over the left and then under the left, like that, pull it nice and tight. And then left over right. Pull it tight. And then using our needle, I like to start with having the needle already in right at, through one of the holes that I just pulled that tail through and tied it on just to get it ready and then take both of the thread tails, fold them both over and then stick them through and then we can lose this thread inside the body like so. Give that a good tug and then we can just stick these body, these two tails back inside the body. I'm going to use the back of my needle to do that because there's very little length to them. So, same thing, you can just sort of squeeze and massage it and it'll get rid of any sort of weird divots that you've got. You can also, if you're, you might notice that my, my tail or my feet, these ones are kind of going a little bit squampus this way and these ones are kind of going this way. You can actually, the yarn will be pretty forgiving if you just take and twist it in opposite directions to just kind of straighten out those legs. As you can see, they're now pretty straight. All right, now we're going to attach the two ears. I find it's easier to attach from the tail that we had pulled through instead of the tail that we used as the start of the magic circle. So it'll be the one that's more on the outside. Take it, thread your needle, and then we're going to attach it to the body. I like to attach it just barely behind the eye and a little bit towards the top of the mouse instead of the side of the mouse. So I'm going to go through this hole here and this hole here, like so. And then holding that thread out of the way. I'm going to go to the other side over here where this single crochet, the opposite end of where we are at the end here. I'm going to go to the beginning and 
slide my needle through both of those hoops at the same time, pull it tight to the body, use the needle for now, and the same way we did with the tail, we're going to do right over left, left over right, pull tight, and you have your ear, and we're going to lose the tails inside the ear, or the body, again. Just like that. Pretty cute. Now we just have to attach the other ear to the other side. Exactly the same way. With the arm yarn, three eye needle. Just one bit behind the where the eyes attached. Right there. So we'll pull some yarn out, so we're just gonna stick it back in before we attach this one. Now that both the ears and the tail have been firmly attached to the body, you have a completed mouse! So you just get to revel in the excitement of your little mouse. Appreciate its cuteness and give it a good name. Congratulations!